Hello micro students. I hope that this uh, video will help you be able to tackle the graphs for perfect competition, monopoly, and monopolistic competition and make you feel a little more comfortable with the graphical analysis. The first thing I wanted to go through is the fact that for the graphical analysis you need to do three steps or look at three rules that will help guide your graphical analysis. First what I'll do is walk through these rules and then I'll go to do some graphical analysis and illustrate how these rules are applied. The first rule, and I'll just read it from this particular uh, slide, in order to maximize net profit or minimize net losses, a firm should produce a quantity of output where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. This rule implies the unit of output should be produced as long as its marginal revenue is greater than or equal to its marginal cost. So basically what this rule means is when you're looking at a graph where you have marginal revenue and the marginal cost curve, then the best quantity that firm can produce to earn the highest net profit possible is the quantity where marginal revenue and marginal cost are equal. Only at that quantity will they earn the highest net profit possible. Now if they happen to be losing money, then that marginal revenue, marginal cost uh, quantity will still help them to lose the least or to minimize their losses. So this rule one, remember, tells you one thing. It tells you the best quantity to produce. Now, after you've, after you've graph, done the graphical analysis and know what that quantity is, the second step is to apply rule two. And rule two says, in order to determine net profit, you have to compare price and average total cost. There are three possible outcomes. If price is equal to average total cost, we can say that the firm earned a normal profit or an economic profit of zero. If the price they're receiving is greater than their average total cost, then they're earning an economic profit. And if the price is less than their average total cost, they're experiencing an economic loss. Now rule two tells you just one thing, and that is how to calculate the profit or the loss, or how to determine if they're making a profit or a loss. When you look at these graphs, you're going to see a demand curve, and that is the price line. That's where we get the price from. For perfect competition, that demand curve happens to be horizontal. It's the same as the marginal revenue curve. And when you're looking at that horizontal price line, which is our demand curve, all you have to do is look at where average total cost lies in relationship to that demand curve. If it's above the demand curve, then the firm is losing money. If the the average total cost lie below the demand curve, then the firm is earning an economic profit. If the average total cost is exactly the same as the price, then they're earning a normal profit or an economic profit of zero. So the first rule tells you quantity. The second rule allows you to determine if they're making a profit or a loss. The third rule, well, that's one that you have to use only in the cases of a firm that is experiencing a loss. And rules three talks about, oops, well, too far. Rule three reads, if a firm is experiencing an economic loss in the short run, in order to minimize that loss, they must choose whether or, whether or not to produce the quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost or to produce zero units of output. So when you're losing money, you have two choices produce that best or optimal quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost or produce zero which we would refer to as shutting down. So in order to make this choice they have to compare price and average variable cost. If price is greater than or equal to average variable cost then in the short one run it's okay to produce the quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost even though they're losing money. But if the price they're getting is less than the average variable cost, they should shut down and produce zero in the short run. That terminology, shutting down and producing zero, applies only to the short run. In the long run, if nothing changes for the firm, they should exit the industry. 
Okay, now I'm going to switch over to some PowerPoint slides. And um, in fact, I think I'll actually keep going on this, this particular, these few pages here for a little bit. So let me see. Okay, I need to go forward, so bear with me. Okay, here's a particular graph. It's a wheat farmer. So that's my representation of a perfectly competitive firm. And you've got the demand curve with a horizontal line. It's this price or demand is also the marginal revenue. Marginal revenue just means the additional revenue from selling one more. In this case, it's one more bushel of wheat. And what I've already done prior to this particular page is display the supply and demand for wheat in the wheat market. And the forces of supply and demand together are determining an equilibrium price of $10. That means for each individual wheat producer, the demand for their product is infinitely elastic at $10. That means that as long as they charge $10, since they're such a small producer, they can sell as much as they possibly, probably, or possibly could produce. Now, you have a marginal cost curve shown on that graph. Remember, the marginal cost curve often looks like a check mark. And then you have the average total cost curve. It asks you in this on this particular page to label the quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost as 1,000 units. And then you're asked to calculate the total revenue, the total cost, and the profit. Now I am going to switch to those PowerPoint slides. And here we've got the first slide. And again, here's your marginal cost curve, marginal revenue, average total cost. Rule 1 says produce the quantity where MC equals MR. What you have to do is start with the marginal cost curve, follow it till it hits the marginal revenue curve, then go straight down. That we're going to call 1,000 units. And then you're asked to calculate total revenue. Well, total revenue is just price times quantity. So that would be 1,000 times 10, or 10,000. Total cost, well, you don't have total cost on here. But what you have is average total cost. And for each one of these 1,000 units, the average total cost is $10. So the average total, or the total cost, would just be the average total cost times quantity. So in this case, the total cost would be, again, $10,000. $10 times 1,000. And that means the profit is zero. Now, that's an economic profit of zero. That means the firm is earning a normal profit. We mean by that a fair or average rate of return in a highly competitive industry. Now, don't be confused and don't think that if the profit is zero, that that's necessarily a bad thing, because it's not. It means that the owner of this business is able to pay themselves all their explicit costs and all their implicit costs. So they're earning a fairer average rate of return. They're getting paid for all their opportunity costs, meaning the value of their time, what they could be doing instead. They're getting that uh, value. They're not getting anything more than that, but they're making that value. OK, let me go to the next slide. In fact, I'm going to kind of go past that. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go to this next slide. Now, this next slide, it's kind of pre-done here. And I'm talking about Wheat Farmer B. And I've made this statement, Wheat Farmer B is more efficient than Wheat Farmer A. So, well, the minute you hear efficiency or know that they're more efficient, that means that they should have lower costs. So again, this is the graph for Wheat Farmer B. As you can see, here's the average total cost curve. It lies well below the demand curve. And that means, well, if the costs are here and the price is here, they're winning the battle, meaning the average total cost is less than the price, so they must be earning an economic profit. So again, to, in order to perform the graphical analysis, you're going to start by completing step one. Start with the marginal cost curve. Follow it till it hits the marginal revenue curve. Stop. Go straight down. And we're going to call that 1,500 units. 
here's the average total cost curve and I'm going to ask you to basically only look at this region on the graph. This is all you need to be concerned with. Once you find where marginal cost and marginal revenue are equal, everything that you're interested in lies on this line. In other words, this line related to the quantity of 1,500 units. If you go straight up from 1,500 to you hit or intersect the average total cost curve, I'm going to go over to this price and cost axis and I'm going to estimate, well, looks like the average total cost for each one of those 1,500 units is $7. So, um, I'm going to ask you now, uh, calculate total revenue, total cost, and profit, and profit per unit. I think I have this on another slide, but nope, I guess I don't. Okay. So, total revenue would be 1,500 times 10, or 15,000. Total cost would be 15 times 7, which would be, now I have to stop and think about that, um, 10,500. So that means their economic profit has to be 4,500. Hopefully I'm doing my math correctly. Anyway, so 4,500. And then I'm also going to ask you, what's their profit per unit? Now, if their total profit is 4,500 and you divide by 1,500 the quantity, then that tells you that the profit per unit would be $3. But you know, there's kind of an easier way to make that determination. And if you want to know the profit per unit, all you do is take price, in this case is $10, and subtract average total cost, which is 7, and that tells you their profit per unit is $3. The same result we got by taking the total profit of 4500 divided by the 1500 quantity. Okay, let me see what I've got on this next slide. Okay, I've got this problem, definite problem going on here. This is Wheat Farmer C. As it tells you at the top of this example, Wheat Farmer C has more land than Wheat Farmers A and B, but his equipment is much older and slower. So, well, so his cost must be higher. Again, to do this graphical analysis, you're going to approach it in the same way. Find the marginal cost curve. Follow it till it hits or intersects with the marginal revenue curve and go straight down. So again, start with the marginal cost curve. Follow it till it hits marginal revenue. Go straight down. And then I'm going to ask you, after you've done that, to draw this big vertical line through your graph. Let me go to the next slide where I can show this. Okay, there's my um, point where marginal revenue and marginal cost are equal. I'm going to label that quantity 2,000 units. And here's this, this obnoxious dark line I want you to draw through your graph. Everything that you're going to look at on this graph relates to points on this particular line. Here's where MC equals MR, telling us the quantity. Keep going straight up from 2,000, and this is the point where it intersects the average total cost curve. So the average total cost, I'm going to call that $16. And then there's one more number we need to actually do some of the calculations that I'm going to ask you to do, and that is the average variable cost. On this graph, the average variable cost, well, let's call that $12. So now, you could calculate total revenue, total cost, economic profit, or loss. Hopefully, you can look at this graph and see, wait a minute, they're, they've got big problems. Their price is 10, and both of the cost curves, average total and average variable cost, lie above the demand curve. So they're losing money. So in this case, you'd be calculating a loss. And then you can also calculate the loss per unit. We could calculate the total variable cost if we wanted to. For now, I'm just going to ask you to calculate the total revenue, the total cost, the amount of the economic loss, and the loss per unit. Okay, first of all, total revenue. Well, total revenue is just P times Q. And total revenue in this case is 2,000 units times the price of 
So total revenue is 20000 Then we've got total cost. Well, total cost, that's average total cost, which is $16. Average total cost times quantity, which is 2000 So 16 times 2000 is 32000 So we've got 20000 as far as revenue minus 32,000 our cost and that means they're losing 12,000 the loss per unit well the loss per unit you can take the $12,000 loss divided by 2,000 or you can take ATC which is $16 minus the price 16 minus 10 gives you a $6 loss now the reason this example is here is because we haven't applied Rule 3 yet. Rule 3 is applied when you have the case of an economic loss. And again, what Rule 3 says is, hey, if you're losing money, there's an extra step you have to take. And that is to compare price, in this case $10, to average variable cost, which is 12 So. The rule says if the price is equal to or greater than the average variable cost, in the short run, it's okay to continue to produce even though you're losing money because maybe something can change. Maybe, for example, in this case, this farmer could get rid of that older equipment and become much more efficient and lower those costs. Or, you know, something could happen that would allow this farmer to stay in the market, and that would be maybe there's an increase in demand for wheat and if there was an increase in demand for wheat that would raise its price and that would allow this farmer to turn his loss maybe into a profit or at least not as bad a loss as what he's experiencing at this point so rule three says compare price to AVC in this case the price is 10 the average variable cost is 12 since the average variable cost is 12, in the short run, this, produce, this farmer should produce zero. And we would say they would shut down and produce zero. Because the price they're getting for every one of the units is 10, but the direct variable cost of producing every one of those units is 12. So think about it. If you're selling a product or a service, and it costs you $12 to produce it, you can only sell it for 10, then don't do it. Because not only do you have the variable cost to pay, which are the direct costs associated with producing the output, but you always have you also have the fixed cost. So if the the price you're getting is not covering at least the variable cost in the short run, you would shut down and produce zero, which is the case for this wheat farmer. Let me go to another uh, example here. Okay, here's wheat farmer D. You've got your marginal cost curve. We've got our $10 price. We've got average variable and average total cost. So again, to do the graphical analysis, you start with the marginal cost curve. You follow it till it hits marginal revenue. And then you go straight down. And then, again, draw an obnoxious line up and down your graph through this point. And that's what you're going to only look at is the, the curves or uh, intersection points on that line. So I'm going to say MC equals MR determines an optimal or desired quantity of 900 units. That's me applying rule 1. Then I've drawn my obnoxious line up and down through the graph and I hope you can notice that $10 is not only the price but it's your average variable cost. And when you're doing the graphical analysis you know it's a good idea when you get one of these graphs to write out here in the margin put down P equals 10 also in this case you're going to write P equals AVC equals 10 then if you keep going up here is the point at which 900 is associated with average total cost and let's call that $16 so the total revenue in this case is 900 times $10 which is 9000 the total cost well the total cost is 16 times 9 and so you know I don't have a calculator here so I'm just going to ask you to calculate that 
but 16 times 9 would be the total cost. Since they're losing money, um, and you can, I'm sorry, let me go skip back for a moment. You can calculate total revenue minus total cost to determine their economic loss. In this case, their economic loss, well, the loss is $6 a unit. Price minus ATC gives you a negative 6, so that means they're losing $6 a unit times 9, which means they're losing $5,400. So, we can calculate their loss and using Rule 2, comparing price and, a and ATC. And then Rule 3, we're required to use because they are losing money. So Rule 3 says, when you're losing money, compare price and average variable cost. In this case, well, price and average variable cost are both $10, so that's a good thing. It means that the price they're able to sell their output covers everything but the fixed cost. It pays for all of the variable cost to produce the output. So in this case, what Rule 3 says is, yeah, go ahead and produce 900 units of output. You're going to lose $5,400. But if you produced nothing, how much would you lose? Think about that question. In this case, if this farmer was to produce nothing, how much would he lose? Well, remember, in the short run, he still has to pay his fixed cost. So in the short run, he would still lose 5400 even if he produced zero units of output because he's got to pay his fixed cost. So in this case, Rule 3 says, Hey, go ahead, produce the 900 units of output. You're going to lose $5,400. The alternative is to produce zero units of output and lose $5,400. So why do you suppose it's a better choice to go ahead and produce the 900 units and lose $5,400 rather than doing nothing and losing $5,400? Okay, if you think about that for a moment, I hope you realize we are looking at a competitive market model and what that means is that by staying in the market and producing 900 units maybe they will be able to learn how to refine their production techniques they'll learn some ways to become more efficient if they're able to learn some ways to become more efficient then they can lower those cost curves and decrease that loss by producing nothing there's no they're not going to learn how to become more efficient and lower costs. So anyway, that's um, the, the example of Wheat Farmer D. Let me go to the next example. Okay, this one gets a little more complicated. And maybe I should have shown you the graph without all these lines on it. But let's just assume we're looking at it for the first time. Here's the average total cost curve. Again, it lies above the price line, which is 10. Here's the average variable cost curve. It's below the price, so that's pos that's a good that's a good thing. And we want the cost curves. We always want the cost curves at least equal to or below the price line. And then here's our marginal cost curve. So applying rule one, you start with the marginal cost curve. You follow it till it hits marginal revenue, and right there you stop. Go straight down. We're going to call this 750 units of output. Then you're going to draw an obnoxious line up and down through your graph. And we're going to call this uh, 750 units. This line is going to measure all the important values that we need for this graph. You don't have to be looking out here. You don't have to be looking out here. Everything you need to view and make a, a judgment about, it rests on this line. Right at this point is where 750 is associated associated with the average variable cost curve. Let's call that $7. And I would write out here on the margin, AVC equals 7. Keep going straight up. And well, here's our $10 price. So over here, I'd write price equals 10. Then keep going. And this is where average total cost is associated with 750. Go over to the price axis with which also measures the cost, and we'll call our average total cost 12. Okay, so again, I don't have a calculator, so I'm going to um, speak about what the math is rather than maybe the answers.
but um, looking at this graph, graph I would hope you can see that right away this wheat farmer is also losing money and as I usually say in class are they winning or losing the battle well they're losing the battle and the reason they're losing the battle is because their average total cost per unit is twelve dollars and they can only sell it for ten dollars a unit in this case the units refer to bushels of wheat so you can calculate total revenue that's price ten dollars times quantity 750 and actually if you look at this graph this rectangle represents total revenue and it's just 10 times 750 so that's 7500 then you've got your average total cost up here being $12 so if you multiply $12 times 750 that will give you your total cost then take your total revenue 7500 minus your total cost which is twelve dollars times seven hundred and fifty and that's going to give you your economic loss now I can kind of work backwards to tell you how much that economic loss is even though I don't have a calculator handy since my loss per unit is twelve minus ten oh let me say that correctly sorry ten minus twelve price minus ATC I know that they're losing two hundred dollars or two dollars for every unit well, if they're losing two dollars for every unit and they're selling seven hundred and fifty, then two times seven hundred and fifty says their economic loss is fifteen hundred dollars. Okay, so this is probably for perfect competition the worst looking graph that you would have to analyze. But again, you're applying rules one, two, and three over and over again for all the graphical analysis. However, the bad news is, is that the graphs get more complicated after this model of perfect competition. Let me see if I have another graph here to go to. Um, I do, but I'm going to let this one go. So I'm going to stop this particular video right now. And what I will do is resume with another video. I'll show rules 1, 2, and 3 again, and then I'll show you how to do more complicated graphical analysis where the demand curves now would become downward sloping and the marginal revenue curve becomes separate. It lies below the demand curve, and that can be for monopoly and for monopolistic competition.